What's up you guys, welcome back to the Average Joe Investor channel. Most experts and most of the articles we read online will tell you that you need half a million dollars, three quarters of a million, or a million dollars plus in order to retire. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can retire, stop working and living off of your portfolio income with less than $500,000. <laughs> So if you were to ask the average financial advisor here in America, they'd tell you that the traditional way to retire is to have a certain portfolio size and then to periodically sell shares of your investments to create income. And to figure out how much money you can actually pull out of your accounts, most advisors will talk about the 4% rule or a guardrail strategy where you can potentially pull out 5% or more, and they'll talk about Monte Carlo scenarios. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of these strategies. They are proven to work. Problem is most of these strategies require a lot of capital to implement them. If you think about the 4% rule, if you wanted to live off of $40,000 a year from your portfolio, you take 40,000 divided by 0.04, means you'd have to have a million dollars in the portfolio. $30,000 would require a portfolio of $750,000. And let's say you could utilize a 5% distribution strategy. Well, if you take $40,000 divided by 0 0.05, you get $800,000 portfolio. And if you're a diligent saver over time, there's no issue meeting these goals. But a lot of people are starting late, a lot of people are starting from zero, and they have five, 10, maybe 15 years left before they need to retire. Getting to 750, $800,000, maybe a million dollars is just gonna to prove to be too difficult. So how can you do it with a portfolio of less than $500,000? The strategy, very simply, is owning index ETFs, such as the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, or the Russell 2000, and selling covered calls. Now, for those of you that already know how this strategy works, feel free to jump to the timestamp pictured right here. But if you want to learn more about the covered call strategy and understand how it works, then stay with me right now. Now, as the option seller, when you sell a contract, you're receiving premium up front, just like an insurance company receives premium, but you are also locking yourself into an agreement wherein you agree to sell your shares if the market price gets to a certain point. For every covered call contract you sell, okay, you have to own 100 shares of the stock. So if you own 500 shares of a stock or an ETF, you could sell five contracts. And for every contract you sell, you will receive premium. Okay, so to help understand what's going on here with a covered call, let's pretend that we own a stock. Let's pretend we own the S&P 500. SPY is the ticker symbol. Okay, and let's say that right now, the price of uh, SPY is right here, okay? And that's the price. We'll draw a line across here. And we'll say that that is 513, because that's actually what the price is right now. And so from here, obviously, the stock can go up or down in value. We don't know what what is going to happen in the future. And so what we do with the covered call is we are locking in our maximum potential gain in exchange for income now. Here's what I mean. Let's say we were looking at selling a covered call. We're an options seller here right at this level right here, okay? And let's say that that is 517, okay? That is our cap here. So when we sell this covered call at 517, we're receiving premium. Actually, I believe that for a week, the premium on this is $300 here, okay? So you receive $300 per contract to do this. Now, a few things could happen here in price. Let me just change the, the color here. Let's say first scenario, the price of, of SPY goes like this. It goes up, it comes in here, and it never reaches 517 and it never stays, but uh, goes above it and stays there. Let's say it goes here and it stops right here. Because the price of SPY never reached our strike price of 517, the option at expiration expires worthless. We keep the $300 and we have no obligation to sell our shares. Okay, that's scenario number one. Now let's look at scenario number two. We'll do this in green. Let's say this price goes here, it shoots way up here and it stays elevated and at expiration here at the end, it is above our strike price. In this scenario, we will be obligated to sell our shares. Uh, for every option contract, 100 shares, we'd sell 100 shares and the price we agree to sell them at is 517, not the price up here, which is what it's at. Let's say this is 519 or 518. We sell them for 517. Okay, but we also received the three the $300 and we get to keep that money. So there's some opportunity cost here. We get to participate in all of this gain right here in this situation. So when the price goes up to 517, we're still participating in this gain here, but we do not get any of this up here. 
That's our opportunity cost. We didn't lose money. We just didn't get to participate in all of the gains, but we were compensated with that $300. That is cash flow for us. So to recap here, when we sell a covered call, we are agreeing to sell our shares at a specific price if the market price is at that price or higher at expiration. In exchange, though, for that agreement, that obligation we have, we are receiving income up front on day one. And this income can be very lucrative and we can live off of this income. That's the key secret here. Now, when we talk about selling covered calls, we have a lot of flexibility in how we do it. We can sell monthly contracts that last for 30 days. We can sell bi-weekly every 14 days or two weeks. We can sell weekly. We can, in, in some instances, sell daily. So instead of selling shares to create income, instead we can create income without selling shares. We're just capping how much growth we have in the portfolio, but we're compensated well for doing so. So we'll look at an example here with the S&P 500, ticker symbol SPY. And to be clear, we can do this with other ETFs as well, specifically the NASDAQ 100, QQQ, the ticker symbol, or the Russell 2000, ticker symbol IWM. Okay, so we're looking at SPY and the current price is 513.07. Okay, so in order to sell a covered call, we'll need to look at the option chain, which I'll pull up in just a second. Remember that with a $400,000 portfolio, I'll pull up this calculator here, how much income can we generate with a $400,000 portfolio with the traditional distribution strategy with a 4% rule or a 5% rule? Well, first off, we'll take $400,000, multiply that by 0 0.04, would be a distribution amount annually of just $16,000. And if it was a 5% distribution strategy, we'd take $400,000 times 0 0.05, would be only $20,000 per year. Let's see what we can accomplish with a $400,000 portfolio. So first off, we'll take a look at the option chain for the S&P 500, SPY. What we'll do here is, well, first off, we'll look at a 30-day expiration. Okay, we'll go down here to May 3rd. 2024, which is 29 days from today. Now, a few quick things here to make sure you're aware of. We've got our strike price right here. Okay, that's the price that we are agreeing to sell our shares if the market price for the underlying investment is above that level at expiration, in this case, May 3rd. Here we have the bid and the ask right here. So the price we would receive is somewhere between the bid, which is the maximum amount a buyer is willing to pay for the option, and the ask, which is the lowest price that a seller is potentially willing to sell the option contract right now. Now, reminder here, one option contract equals 100 shares. Okay, so these prices you're seeing here with the bid and the ask is actually a price per share. So to figure out the actual real dollar amount per contract, you have to take that number and multiply by 100. So in this case right here, for this one, the, the bid and the ask is 904 and 912. So the difference, the, the in-between number there would be 908. So you take 9.08, I'll pull my calculator here, 9.08 times 100 would be $908. To be specific here, if you were to sell this option right here, then you would be obligating yourself, let me pull it over, actually over here, at the at the 514 strike price right here, you'd be obligating yourself to sell 100 shares of the S&P 500 at 514 per share, okay? And for that agreement, you will be paid by the option buyer in this situation, $908 for every option contract. Now let's look at a scenario here where let's say if the market price is 513 and this is a monthly option here, so we can do this once a month. Uh, let's say we were willing to sell the 517 strike price for the covered call, okay? So 517 is right here. And for this contract, we would receive, if we sold it, $737 per contract. So the question is how many contracts can we sell in this scenario? So let's pull up our calculator. In this scenario, we have $400,000. So we'll take 400,000 and divide by the price of SPY, which is currently 513.07, which means we could purchase approximately 779 shares. Now in this situation, we can't sell eight contracts, right? Because we don't have 800 shares. So in this situation, we'd have seven contracts and we'd have an extra 79 shares that didn't have a contract on them. Okay, so seven contracts is what we could sell here because 779 shares owned divided by 100, okay? Because 100 shares per contract, would be 7.79 contracts. So in this situation, if we were doing this monthly, let's pull this down here. If we went ahead and sold the 517 strike price, we'd again receive $737 per contract. Actually, we'll pull up the calculator again. 737 multiplied by seven contracts would be $5,159 per month. Now I'll just stop right here because I know that some of you might've already realized that, hey, 
This is the day that the S&P 500 was down 1.22%, which means there's probably some extra implied volatility in the markets, anticipating a large bump upward in the future. So to that, I would say you might be right. So let's dial down the premium because we, we shouldn't assume at this point we can collect $737 every time. So let's instead assume we can only collect maybe a fraction of that. Let's say instead of 737, we can only collect, I don't know, $500 instead, okay? A lot less. So in this situation, we take $500, we'd multiply by seven contracts, would be still $3,500. That's every single month. Now we compare that to, what were we talking about before? 400,000 times, at best case scenario, 5% withdrawal rate or distribution rate, with only $20,000 annually divide by 12, it's only 1666. So we're talking about over double the income every single month. And the amount of time and effort it takes to do this is really low. Once a month, you sell the contracts and then you sit there and do nothing with respect to your portfolio until 30 days from today. Now, this is the most conservative strategy with respect to the time frame, because if you lower the time frame, you're going to be giving yourself access to more option premium. Let me show you. We're looking at 14 days or two weeks. Okay, so we're looking at the same 517 strike price. We can see here that we could capture about $440 per contract and we have seven contracts, if you can recall. So we'll take 440. And let's, let's just right now, just cut that right now due to the potential um, inflated premium we're getting due to volatility. Let's go ahead and assume instead of 440, let's assume we can only do 350, which is a pretty significant decrease. We'll take 350, we'll multiply that by seven contracts, it's 2450, okay? This is already every two weeks, which is pretty insane. We'll multiply that by 26 to get an annual number, then divide by 12. So $5,308, that's the conservative figure. It's way more than we're getting with the 30 day or the monthly strategy and with the traditional strategy. Let's go to weekly here to see even what we have at, as an option. Get rid of the 14 day here, we'll go up to seven days. And we'll be maybe a little bit more conservative with the seven day. Instead, we'll go out to 518 right here. We'll pull up our calculator. So we can collect about 257 to 260. To play it safe, we'll call it 200, okay? Bring it down to 200 every single week. So 200 times seven contracts, okay? And then take that 1400, multiply that by 52 weeks in the year, okay? $72,800. We will divide that by 12. We're looking at $6,066 in monthly average option premium at a very conservative, was it 36 delta or $5 above the current market price for the weekly option expiration. Okay, so now let's talk about potentially a $250,000 portfolio because the reality is with $400,000, we had a lot more contracts, a little bit easier to generate income. Even if we were already doing so much better than the traditional strategy, the question now is, can we generate enough income with a $250,000 portfolio to live on? So to remind you guys, $250,000 times the 4% rule, 0 0.04, would be $10,000 annually. And if it was 5%, we take 250 multiplied by 0 0.05 is only 12,500. Divide that by 12 months, only $1,041.67 from your portfolio. So assuming 250,000, how many contracts, how many shares first? So if we divide that by 513.07, current market price, means we'd own 487.26 shares. So with that, we'd own 487 shares and we would only be able to sell four contracts as opposed to previously talking about seven contracts. So what we'll go ahead and do here, we'll first look at a 29 day strategy right here. We'll work with the same strike prices just for looking as an apples to apples comparison. So assuming 513 is the market price, 517 is our strike price, we'd collect $737. We'll round that down to $600 right now. Just to be conservative, we'll take 600. We will multiply that by four contracts. So $2,400 every single month. We're talking about over double what we would get if we were looking at the, tradi the traditional distribution strategy. Let's take a look though if it were doing it every, uh, every two weeks here. Zoom up here to the April 18th expiration. Same idea, 517 strike would be $440 right now. We'll bring that down to 350 to be conservative ongoing. So we'll bring up our calculator. We'll say $350 every single two weeks, right? Times four contracts. So that's $1,400 after four contracts. Multiplied though by 26, because it's every two weeks. And then divide by 12. We're looking at 
$33.33 on average every single month. That's nearly three times what we were talking about with the traditional strategy. With the weekly strategy, same idea here, we'll look at 517, and that's $300 here. We'll bring it down to 200 to be very conservative, 200 every single week, okay? But four contracts, so $200 premium times four contracts is $800 every week times 52 is $41,600. Divide that by 12, we're talking about $3,466, which is three times what we were talking about with the traditional strategy. So there are a ton of different ways to run this strategy based on the time frame you wanna run the strategy or how far away from the strike price you wanna run it. But the key takeaway you should have here is there is absolutely a way for you as the average Joe investor who doesn't have half a million, a million dollars saved up, it's totally a way for you to retire on less than $500,000. In some cases, as low as $250,000, maybe even lower, depending on how much money you need from your portfolio. Now, one of the biggest comments I get from these types of videos is, well, hey, Joe, what happens when the market goes down, right? So what I want to do in the next video, just for full awareness here, I want to talk about a strategy you can implement within this type of context that would allow you to adjust your strategy if you are concerned about a downward turn in the market that's still going to give you cash flow but give you some downside protection as well. It's gonna be a variation of this exact strategy. Now, if this strategy made a little bit of sense to you and you just want a little bit more help working one-on-one -on -one with me, or if you wanna learn from a community of amazing Average Joe investors, make sure to check out the link down in the description below for the Average Joe Investor Patreon community. Lots of great options there, great community, and if you wanna work exclusively with me one-on-one -on -one to get your questions answered, kind of walk through the strategy, um, kind of help guide you through how to set it up and to, what things you need to be thinking about, check out the link down below in the description. Hopefully you found some value in this video. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to as many comments as possible on the day I post a new video. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.